Mary had a little man, 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 man. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. In January of last year, the goon squad bursting into this home without a warrant after a white neighbor reported several black males for suspicious behavior. Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker placed under arrest in their own home without any evidence of a crime. Prosecutors say the officers then repeatedly tased the two men, calling them racial slurs, beating and even sexually assaulting them oh over the course of 90 minutes. Deputy Elworth shooting Jenkins in the mouth. And as he lay there bleeding, investigators say the six officers conspired to cover up their actions, even planting a gun at the scene and pretending to seize drugs from the victims, leading to them being falsely charged. Can you imagine the abject terror those two victims must have felt? Tuesday, Elward apologizing to the victims. I feel like you did exactly what you did. And Deputy Elward did apologize to the victims yesterday as he was being sentenced, but only one of the victims, not the one he shot, says he has forgiven him. As these officers are being sentenced on the federal level, they are still awaiting sentencing on state charges and are staring down a $400 million civil rights lawsuit. Yeah, it's uh, pretty amazing, isn't it, everybody, isn't it? Um, so there are two more officers were um, sentenced today, and there will be two more officers that will be sentenced tomorrow. Uh, that report was about the two officers that were sentenced yesterday. There are six officers uh, that are part of this goon squad that went into this house based on a neighbor's phone call that these black men were hanging around with some white women. I, I think y'all need to go and check on their behavior. And uh, all kinds of uh, sexual assault with, uh, you know, sex toys, yeah. Uh, and uh, putting your junk in their faces, that happened too, and putting your junk in their bare butts after they were handcuffed. I mean, this is like really uh, crazy uh, sick. And this went on tasing them and beating them and punching them. And then uh, one of the officers actually put a gun in one of the guy's mouths, uh, Mr. Jenkins there, and shot him. And that's why Mr. Jenkins is hard to understand now, because Mr. Jenkins only has half a tongue and uh, a hole in his face, which they had to sew up. Um, now, the reason why this is so important is because this is the Department of Justice. This is this is a, uh, a federal, uh, you know, uh, case. This is, uh, you know, it started as a local, but what you saw there was Christopher Ray. Christopher Ray saying, "Can you imagine the terror uh, that these two men experienced?" Uh, it turns out that um, they're. <laughs> uh, there, there's, there's a man who um, wants to be president again in this country who a couple of weeks ago I, I showed you him saying to his loyalist, his, uh, you know, uh, fever uh, swamp, that he would destroy the Department of Justice and indemn because the Department of Justice, he said, was practicing reverse racism. Uh -huh, you mean like prosecuting white police officers for assaulting, beating, shooting, uh, maiming, mangling, mutilating, uh, you know, people in their own home who were black citizens. Um, he says that's reverse racism to prosecute the white police officers and he will indemnify. Do you remember this little clip? It sent a chill down my spine when I heard him say it. I had to pull it because, you know, I mean, Howard makes me watch these uh, freaking things. But um, this, this, was, this was Donald Trump just a couple weeks ago. Completely overhaul DOJ to investigate every radical, out of control prosecutor in America for the illegal, racist, in reverse enforcement of the law. And I am also going to indemnify all police officers and law enforcement, every police officer and all law enforcement, all throughout the United States to protect them. It's called indemnification. I'm going to indemnify them. So these officers here, uh, this clown car of, uh, you know, sick freaks, and they are sick freaks. Um, the goon squad uh, in Rankin County, Mississippi, 
uh, Donald Trump said, you know, would, would indemnify them. And so any progress that has been made on um, respecting people who have not done anything wrong uh, but end up dead on their couch eating ice cream or end up dead in their bed uh, because the police burst in and made a mistake and the uh, homeowner didn't know what was going on and shot his weapon. And so that homeowner uh, was arrested and uh, Breonna Taylor is dead. You know what I'm talking about? So Donald Trump would end all of the progress made on shining a light on George Floyd and on uh, Derek Chauvin's behavior and put it right back to, I don't know, the Klan era. I mean, what, what, what is so stunning about this case, this goon squad case in Mississippi, which is where we left off yesterday, because frankly, I didn't leave myself enough time to discuss this with you, but what's really disgusting about it and what's really hopeful about it What's disgusting about it is that this apparently, through this uh, trial, we found out that this behavior, of course, has gone on for decades, decades in Mississippi, and that there are at least 20 victims, some that we uh, you know, now know, two of them, we, well, actually three of them we know. There's a third a victim who was also, uh, it was a traffic stop. He was white. It was a traffic stop. Uh, this goon squad stopped him, and uh, I guess they were just in the mood uh, to do some damage to a human being. And so they did all this to this guy in a traffic stop situation. They shot the gun, but they shot the gun into the air, not in the guy's mouth. I guess that's the difference between being white and black in Mississippi. But, uh, you know, they, they put their junk in his face. And then when he was handcuffed, uh, they uh, pulled down his pants and they put, uh, you know, uh, the junk in uh, near the man's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's so disgusting. It's so bizarre. I, I don't, you know, it, it, I have, but the, the hopefulness of the story is that we got it exposed even in the lesser corners of Mississippi, right? So Mississippi, we're talking about, has actually had a trial now where yesterday two officers were sentenced. One got 20 years, the other got 18 years. Uh, today, uh, uh, yes, well, today two, two more officers were sentenced. One got 40 years. Yeah, one got 40 years. Christian Deadman, he was the one uh, that has consistently subjected residents to physical and sexual assaults. Okay, so he was uh, given 40 years in prison. And uh, one of the, the youngest guys who was part of the goon squad, a guy named Daniel Updike, he got 18 years. Of course, his lawyer said it was peer pressure. I mean, they, they, they brought him into this culture of violence. He was a nice kid, and look what they did to him. And they, they made his uh, promotions, you know, uh, uh, pr predicated on how how violent he could be and how obscene he could get with the uh, you know people that he was uh, you know arresting even though they hadn't committed any crimes and it's not his fault he thought that was the way to success in mississippi he really that was the best they could argue and that's the bright spot in all this the guy did get 18 years uh up Dicta. he's 27 years old he will be in jail until you know he's 50 or so but um the guy who shot uh, Mr. Jenkins in the face, in the mouth. Um, he he he. Yesterday was sentenced to uh, 20 years. Okay, today two more, and tomorrow there'll be two more. There'll be two more. Donald Trump would in, would indemnify them. You know why? He says they lose everything. These police officers. They're afraid to actually. Um, you know, uh, they're afraid to go after crime. They're afraid. From being destroyed by the radical left for taking strong action on crime. See. Now, you know, crime in this country is going down. Everybody uh, should be very aware of that fact now. However, however, Donald Trump feels the need to offer indemnification to the police, to the police who do this disgusting stuff that incenses people. And finally, the light has been shown in the deepest, darkest corner of old Mississippi. And six officers are going to jail for a really stinking long time. Reverse racism, everybody.
all things Randy at, at randyroads.com. Go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. In every law to persecute us, it's been one witch hunt and phony investigation after another. These are ridiculous indictments. The single greatest witch hunt of all time. But it's all run by the DOJ. It's crooked stuff. Really, these are crooked people. Deranged Jack Smith. They have no legal grounds, but they did. One time, two times, three times. I got four indictments. Uh, is he right or wrong? I, I mean, the, the way I see it, if these were his personal, personal documents and or he's allowed to have these by the PRA, why would you need to ask questions about video footage? Why would you possibly move the documents when they are coming to retrieve them? To me, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, on top of that, why would you put two lower level employees in the position they're in if you did nothing wrong and these are your own, these are your personal documents? So basically what Brian Butler, who used to work at Magaloco and is now a cooperating witness in the Jack Smith probe into the documents uh, pilfering, uh, is saying, if you have nothing to hide, why are you hiding everything? And why are you attacking the Department of Justice, who appointed a special prosecutor so it's not the Department of Justice uh, that's prosecuting you? It's somebody that is separate and apart from uh, the Department of Justice, okay? Uh, it, it, it's unbelievable. So now you have people that worked at Magaloco actually coming out and saying, I am uh, employee number five. That who, uh, remember we were trying to figure out who employee number five was. Who was number five? Was it Boris Epstein? Was it, uh, you know, like who was? Well, it's him. It's this guy here, Brian Butler. And Brian Butler was uh, on all of the uh, mainstream news outlets yesterday uh, trying to get anybody who will listen to him to listen to him so that he could explain to you that Donald Trump uh, literally lied to the Department of Justice, lied to the FBI, lied uh, in response to a subpoena to return documents. And that uh, this man here, Brian Butler, who was responsible for like uh, organizing the uh, valets at Magaloco for check-in, uh, worked there for 20 stinking years, 20 years he worked there, along with Walt Nauda, okay, and uh, this uh, the other guy who's in charge of the maintenance, uh, you know, over there. Um, and the three of them are like being asked to load these boxes uh, out of Magaloco and put them into the Trump aircraft so that they could be with, and they don't know what's in them. They, they're unwitting witting accomplices uh, to a heist, to a crime. Well, they know now, right? And so uh, Brian Butler is speaking up and speaking out about this. And, you know, this is why I, I, I had to show you the goon squad crap from the deep, darkest, uh, you know, armpit of this country, Mississippi, Rankin County, Mississippi, which uh, the, the armpit is Rankin, but uh, the, the other part, you know, that where they like to shove their sex toys. Yeah, uh, that would be Tishomingo County. Yeah, I, I know that place entirely too well. Freaking scary, uh, scary ass place. I mean, I was scared in the Piggly Wiggly. I was scared at the high school. I was scared everywhere I went there. And I'm a white girl, so uh, yeah, it was my accent. It was making me different. You can't be different there. Okay, uh, I'm sure we have a ton of listeners there. So any of you, oh, just and feel Tishomingo, free, yeah, feel free to call in and <laughs> <laughs> corroborate any of <laughs> anybody listening in Red Bank, Oklahoma. Anybody listening in uh, you know uh, Tishomingo County, yeah, Red Bay, uh, Alabama, right there on the border. No, nobody's there. Nobody's there except for the Klan. Okay, that's who's there. But I mean, honestly, the, no, that's who ran me out of town. You, you know, you make the face like it's uh, it's like not real. It's real. Uh, that's not the face I'm making. It's a different kind of cringe for the county in general. Just yikes. Oh no, it's uh, it's not a cringe. This this is like it's it. You you would weep if you saw what I saw. You would you would actually ache for your country. You would say, why why is there like a carve out from the 21st century for certain places? How come they're still allowed to do this crap? Okay, how come they're still allowed to stand on people's necks? Thank God for uh, you know the 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 cell phone. Although uh, today uh, the Department of Justice. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're, they're trust busting. I mean, this is an amazing presidency, I have to say. You could have all this with the Trump and the, and, and the Brian Butler and the documents case and the business fraud case and the January 6th case and the uh, Fulton County case and then putting Bonnie Willis on trial in the Fulton County case. I, I, you could have all of this chaos, all of this contradiction, all of this denigration of our Department of Justice, all of these promises to let police officers get away with literally murder. Literally, this is what we're talking about here. Uh, by, by a man who is is holding himself out as the head guy of the law and order party telling police officers that, uh, you know, uh, you can kill George Floyd if I'm your guy. Well, that didn't work, but he tells them that. And it happens. Or you could have Biden who literally today, just this morning, before breakfast, okay, before I even, uh, you know, went for a walk this morning, he had already created 30,000 jobs in Arizona, Ohio, New Mexico, and Oregon, and forgave another $6 billion in student loan debt cancellation. That was before breakfast. You could have that Oh, he also announced new uh, tailpipe, uh, you know, <laughs> regulations uh, in the new and in, in next year. Is it next year? No, in two, two three more years, cars uh, from 27 to 32, 2032, um, in order to, uh, you know, uh, take down the CO2, the carbon emissions. He wants to take out, and uh, we will do it too, um, uh, like 70 tons. It's like a, a super, like, huge number that I can't even fathom of uh, carbon dioxide and uh, also um, nitrogen oxides out of the air. So, you know, this is what that man uh, concerns himself with, uh, you know, when he gets up. Donald Trump, on the other hand, do you know what he was doing this morning? Have any idea what he was doing? He was tweeting, uh, tweeting. he was posting, okay, on his uh, Kmart bargain basement, uh, you know, uh, uh, social media outlet. I don't even want to call it the Walmart of uh, social media outlets because that's an insult to Walmart where, you know, they just, uh, they don't even do anything anymore, Walmart. They contract with, uh, you know, uh, people who make stuff. They put it on their website. And then when you buy it, you're not even buying it through Walmart. You're buying it through the vendor. I mean, I found that out the hard way when I had to return something. But anyway, um, so I don't even want to, you know, say that it's worse than uh, that. But it is. It's worse than that. Anyway, so for, the, for, for two hours, for two hours this morning, Donald Trump was posting insults and, uh, you know, uh, uh, false, false lies about, uh, well, one of them that I saw was keep your filthy hands off of Trump Tower. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> So you could either have a Biden who, like, after breakfast decided, hey, let's uh, let's have a little look-see into uh, antitrust, uh, you know, laws that we have on the books so that we can make sure that Apple users uh, who are paying $1,500 for a freaking phone aren't paying $1,500 for a freaking phone if they don't have to pay $1,500 for a freaking phone. And if the only reason why consumers are being uh, gouged like that is because Apple can do it, because they're the only ones that allow for certain apps to be sold in their app store. Call in, connect. Speak to Randy. Call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Okay, so, you know, this is an election year. We have a choice, and the choice is very stark. It's going to be a choice where we say... Okay, we want democracy to continue, and we would like to continue to move into the 21st century. We would like to see what the future holds. We would like to know if pig uh, kidneys actually could be placed in a person who's on dialysis right now, and they could live a nice life. You know, we would like to keep on going here, okay? Or we could go back to 18 and 63. 18 and 63, where we trash the planet, women become infertile, except for the handmaids, OK, and then the next thing, you know, uh, you have to go work for Serena Joy and have the commander's baby while you're planning to run away to Canada. <laughs> I'm serious. These are our choices. 
Okay, and so uh, that is why time and time again you keep returning to this here channel, to Free Speech TV. And uh, some of you are watching on the Dish Network. Thank you. Some of you are watching on Direct TV. Some of you are watching on Apple TV. Apple. Some of you are watching on Sling. Others on Roku. There are a ton of ways uh, to watch this uh, channel. But you know, distributing these shows and making sure that they get to all these places is a heavy lift. And there are a lot of people that work to do that each and every day in Denver, Colorado. And the largest source of the funding for their salaries and for the electricity and for the office space is you okay it is a uh, a viewer funded network it has been for 25 years i have good news today is a match day those who are uh, givers know what that means if you've never done it before today is the best day to do it why because we have things called frontline funders and our frontline funders are people who really believe in the mission here they really believe in the uh, uh, education in the orientation of the uh, american democracy and everybody who participates in it uh, and so they put their money where our mouths are and they say all right so here's what we'll do to uh, get people to give even more we will match dollar for dollar, whatever they're able to uh, donate today. So that your dollar becomes $2, your $100 becomes $200, $1,000 will become $2,000, and $2,500 becomes $5,000. Now that's some serious uh, change there, and we need it. We need it desperately, especially uh, during an election year. So please donate at 877-378-8669. That is the number to Denver, Colorado. Uh, you can use the QR code on your screen. It will take you to freespeech.org. Uh, we are an org because we're a not-for-profit, and uh, you can also use your phone. Just text 44321 and then put in the letters FSTV, Free Speech TV, and we will send you a secure link, and you can make your donation right there. Whatever you do, remember it's matched dollar for dollar today, all day, um, and uh, we thank you so much for supporting our efforts. Mike in Pennsylvania. Yeah, hi, Ren. Hi, Mike. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised I got to you. Uh, yeah, I'm first time caller and, uh, I just wanted to run something by you okay. that, uh, see what you think. Yes. Uh, you know, when, uh, Trump posted his, uh, you know, keep your filthy hands off of my tower. Yes. That my mind immediately went to the movie. Planet of the Apes, and you know that what? line I, is in there. Yeah, so Charl I think Charlton in Heston. His roundabout way, he was calling Letitia James an ape. Well, you know, I mean, so you had to imagine a movie where Charlton Heston uh, says to uh, ape people, "Get your filthy hands off me," in order to ascribe to Donald Trump racism. Um, you know, I don't even think you have to work that hard, Mike. I think he is a racist. I think you should feel yeah. very free in saying that Donald Trump is a birther. Donald Trump is a racist. Donald Trump has told black people, oh, nobody's done more for you than I did to try and... You're absolutely right, Randy. I agree into, with you. There's my African-American. I mean, the guy is a racist, but he's such a good con man. Now he's saying uh, Jews are self-hating Jews if they don't support him and uh, the right-wing lunatic fringe that is, uh, you know, uh, killing people in Israel, right? Right. Uh, so uh, right. you, feel right. bad, you don't have to go all the way to the Charlton Heston. I, I totally agree with you. <laughs> I just thought maybe it was his roundabout way. It, it probably falling. was. He's he's uh, I don't know how old you are, but uh, he's, he's I'm 72. There, so there you go. You know, he's uh, that's part of his uh, that's part of his current movie references. <laughs> so, OK, thanks. Now, man. I just wanted to see if I was the only person that no. <laughs> picked up on that. Well, no, I mean, uh, when you, the second you said movie, I, I knew exactly where you were going. I knew you were going. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. I, I get you. It's a very famous line, but you, yeah. you don't even have to go there to get to Donald Trump is a racist, because he is. Okay. Right. No, yeah, I agree with you. Okay. All right, thanks. Uh, so, yeah, this is the original birther who's saying now that, uh, you know, I've done more for African Americans than anybody. You know, the stock market here that he was uh, saying would crash under Joe Biden. Yeah, that's a, a, a it's about to set a record if it didn't already. I can't uh, I can't actually keep track of the stock market while I'm working. But uh, 40,000, 40,000 is where it's going. OK, unbelievable. It's it's an amazing environment in which we are uh, toiling right now. 
And uh, like I said, before breakfast, uh, Joe Biden forgave $6 billion worth of student loan debt for people who are public, public service workers, okay? So if you went to college and you borrowed money and now you work in public service, you, you got your loan forgiven today uh, before breakfast. And, uh, you know, here's Donald Trump before 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. Eight times. He posted eight times from 6.30 to 8.30 a.m. Okay, and one of the things he, he posted was, get your filthy hands off of Trump Tower. And then um, he, he, he posted um, that he shouldn't have to put up the money because the, the, the money for appealing, okay, for appealing the award that was given to New York State taxpayers because he earned that money through fraud, fraudulent means, okay? And so he was now told he has to pay back the money that he took through, uh, you know, uh, ill-gotten gains is really what it's called, ill-gotten gains. They call it disgorgement. Uh, and so it's like $454 million, but the interest <laughs> is $115,000 a, a day, $115,000. So nobody wants to, nobody wants to, Chubb won't even do it. Yes, Chubb. No, they won't even do it. They said, you know, uh, they, they put up the money uh, that was backed in cash, uh, for E. Jean, you know, the 88 million, which could have been a, a measly five if he, could, he, if he just would have just kept his mouth shut, but he can't stop himself because he's a child. He's a freaking child. A racist child, but he's a child. <laughs> and so um, he needs now to come up with the money by Monday. By Monday, this is why he's saying, get your filthy hands off of my tower. First of all, here's the crazy part. He doesn't even own it. He doesn't own Trump Tower. When Donald Trump went bankrupt, uh, you know, in the in the 80s and 90s, okay, he decided he wasn't going to build anything. He wasn't going to make anything. He wasn't going to create anything. He was going to enter into branding deals, licensing deals, and he was just going to slap his name on, you know, various crap. Now, Trump Tower was something he built, but he sold it. I mean, he doesn't own anything but his triplex and the uh, stores down below. So anyway, he was uh, posting... I would be forced to mortgage or sell great assets, perhaps at fire sale prices. And if and when I win the appeal, they would be gone. Does that make sense? All caps. Witch hunt. Election interference. And then um, his campaign spokesperson, Stephen Chung. These innuendos are pure bull crap, but he, he said it. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. I don't think anyone believes that this is acceptable behavior for the family of the President of the United States to receive tens of millions of dollars from our adversaries around the world, and they can't say one single thing they did to receive the money. Nobody supports that. I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican, if you're from a big city or a small town. That's not what this democracy is about. That's not <laughs> what uh, the founding fathers set up. They set this up that we have public servants come and, and provide their public service and then go on. They did not set this up for public servants to enrich themselves through their family, through <laughs> influence peddling. <laughs> you could either be gaslit for another four years. I mean, that was James Comer yesterday as the chairman of the Oversight Committee. And when he was saying that a president's family should not be able to enrich themselves uh, during a presidency, I mean, uh, how do you explain Jared? How do you explain Ivanka and her Chinese patents? How do you explain, you know, Jared getting $2 billion from the Saudis? Uh, I mean, I, 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 I didn't even know who he was talking. He's like, well, that's not how it was built, you know, and it wasn't built. Uh, that's called the Emoluments Clause in the United States Constitution, and that would be what Trump violated there? I, I, and then Comer is, is sitting there, and he said, I'm, invi I'm inviting Biden. He needs to come and testify. What? I will invite President Biden to the Oversight Committee to provide <laughs> his testimony and explain why his family received tens of millions of dollars from what? foreign companies with his assistance. With his assistance. We need to hear from the president himself. And I assure the American people that they will be able to evaluate for themselves 
the president's honesty and fitness for the office he now holds. With that. Mr. Chairman, are you going to invite Donald Trump to come and talk about his violations of the emoluments clause? <laughs> you all have investigated Donald Trump for years, and I'm pretty sure I've read in the paper that there's a lot of investigations of Donald Trump. No one's investigated. Well, well we Joe impeached Biden. him. You were invited to impeach uh, are, are Joe you, Biden. Are today. you supporting? Uh, <laughs> are you going to work with me to see that? Uh, Joe Biden comes and answers these discrepancies? I mean, this is a big deal. There's no discrepancies. There's not no been, discrepancies. No, there's, there's no evidence at all that he's committed any high crime and misdemeanor. What is it? <laughs> In closing, I want to thank our panelists. <laughs> yeah, no, they have been investigating this, this impeachment inquiry. Okay, it was announced that it would be started before Joe Biden was even sworn in. Okay. Before January 20th, Marjorie Taylor Greene was saying, we're going to impeach Joe Biden. We're going to impeach Joe Biden. People would say, for what? And she would say, you'll see. You'll see. Yeah, there was no, there's never been a crime. Uh, when you impeach somebody, you need to say what crime or misdemeanor the president that you're impeaching has committed. They have never been able to tell you that because there is no crime. Okay. Yesterday... Uh, Jared Moskowitz, who's my uh, member of Congress, uh, actually invited James Comer to go ahead and take the vote and go ahead and impeach Joe Biden. If he had the votes, he doesn't have the votes. Now, he's sitting there acting all, uh, you know, uh, shocked and amazed that, you know, uh, uh, that, that, that there could be a president who enriched themselves. I mean, you know, Donald Trump ran the, uh, post, the, the old post office as a hotel during his entire presidency. And the Saudis and the Chinese would send their high-ranking, uh, you know, uh, officers, their high-ranking in, in the Chinese Communist Party uh, officials to go stay and book entire floors of suites at Donald Trump's hotels. Uh, in order for Donald Trump to make money off of them. And they would see that as, uh, you know, uh, hey, look, we're giving you something over here. And Donald Trump did take it like that. Ivanka went on a trip with her dad while she was a senior advisor to the president of the United States on Air Force One with her father, with her daddy, flew to China and came back with Chinese patents. Jared left the Oval Office with zero, zero um, experience in running a private equity fund. He's a real estate guy, uh, not really a guy. He's a son of a real estate mogul who went to jail for bad practices, okay? And uh, he has no idea how to run. Got $2 billion worth of Saudi investment, and even the Saudi sovereign fund when they were meeting about whether or not to give Jared this $2 billion, they said not to. They said it would be a bad investment. You'd never see the money again because he doesn't know what he's doing. And they said, well, we have to grease him. We have to. I mean, we killed the guy and they looked the other way. With a bone saw, no less. Yeah, no. Uh, and, and, and Comer is sitting there going, I have never in my life seen anything... What are we even talking about here? What are we talking about? Hunter Biden graduated Yale, okay? He's a lawyer. He also has a business degree. And, I mean, okay, he, he, he ran around the world getting on, uh, you know, different boards. But that's it. What is the crime there? What Ivanka uh, did, she did while her father was president and she was employed by the government of the United States as senior advisor to the president of the United States. That violates the emoluments clause. But because the emoluments clause is a funny name and it goes way back to the uh, you know founding documents and all that because they didn't want people coming into this government enriching themselves off the backs of uh, you know ordinary uh, citizens, right? They but because it's so foreign sounding and we don't talk about any of the amendments except the first and the second. And if you're in trouble, maybe the fourth and the sixth. But I think I've lost half the audience just by saying those two. OK, uh, they don't want to enforce the emoluments clause. Fine. Look what it got you. 
But I mean, honest to God, man, this is like, so you could have this. You could be gaslit all day, every day. You could be subject to this man screaming and yelling about how, you know, everyone is a racist, a reverse racist, and they're persecuting him because he's a rich, white, fat, orange man. I don't even know if he's white. He's orange. He's, he's sort of a, he's burnt orange. He's a, uh, what is that self-tanning product? Why is he still doing that? Anyway, it's reverse racism, you know, because he didn't do nothing wrong. I just showed you something he did wrong that he's never, ever been charged with or prosecuted for doing. But they're sitting there gaslighting you, telling you that everything they're accusing Biden of doing is stuff that I can show you Donald Trump did and Biden did not. Or you could have Biden. You could have Joe Biden, who today got the endorsement of the United Steelworkers Union. President Biden receiving a key endorsement from the United Steelworkers tonight. The president winning union support less than a week after coming out against the sale of U.S. steel to a Japan-based company. The union with 850,000 members tonight saying, with the president's track record of supporting working people, we are eager for his administration's continued progress on our core issues. Okay, so he got the United Auto Workers. Now he's got the United the the, the Steel Workers of America, eight hundred and fifty thousand of them. And 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 Donald Trump is standing on a stage in Dayton, Ohio, saying, if Biden is president again, um, and he goes through with this um this this tailpipe emissions cutting back on tailpipe emissions thing, which he did do today, okay, uh, there will be a bloodbath in the auto industry. Why? Why don't the United Auto Workers Union uh, members know that? Why don't? Because it's not true. Trump did nothing for anybody except himself. So okay, so we got that. And then this morning, he canceled. Uh, Biden canceled. Uh, you know. Uh, what, $6 billion in student debt? Biden administration is announcing a new round of student debt relief for tens of thousands of borrowers who currently work in public service. Senior White House correspondent Selena Wang has the details. Good morning, Selena. Good morning, Selena. Hey, good morning, George. The president is announcing more student loan relief, focusing in on a key campaign promise. This morning, the president, he's canceling nearly $6 billion in student debt for 78,000 public service workers. Oh! These are nurses, teachers, firefighters, and others who are currently enrolled in the public service loan forgiveness program and they'll soon be getting an email from the president telling them about this relief. Now with this latest move the White House says this administration has canceled a total of 144 billion dollars in debt for nearly 4 million Americans and they say that another nearly 400,000 public service workers they are on track to have their student loans forgiven in the coming two years. Now last year remember the Supreme Court had struck down Biden's original plan to cancel $10,000 for all borrowers making less than hundred. dollars $25,000 a year. But the president has found ways around that to cancel more student debt for borrowers. Now, with the general election heating up, this president is eager to show this core group of voters that he has not given up yet. This morning, again, vowing to use all the tools he can to cancel more student debt for more Americans. And the only email I get from Trump is, I need money. The email you get from, from Biden says, you're, you're forgiven. <laughs> Mary had a little man and wow, wow, wow. the fall. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream today. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. We could have this. In Battleground, Arizona, President Biden taking on the top issue for voters, the economy, announcing a major deal to bring computer chip making back to America. Right now, most chips are made in Taiwan. This is going to transform the country in a way you don't even understand yet. The president awarding nearly $20 billion to fund production of semiconductor chips in four states. Arizona, Oregon, Ohio, and New Mexico. Chips that power everything from your phone to your car. It will create nearly 20,000, 20,000 construction jobs, many of which will be union jobs, 10,000 manufacturing jobs, 3,000 
right here in Phoenix with salaries averaging over $100,000 a year and don't all require college degrees. That's a change. That is. <laughs> Biden drawing a clear contrast with his opponent, Donald Trump. On his watch, companies sent American jobs overseas for cheaper labor and imported products. Still, the president seeming to acknowledge that even though the economy is improving, many Americans just aren't feeling it. Wages are up more than prices. Inflation is down dramatically. We have more to do, I get it, we have more to do. But no question, our plan of delivering for the American people is working now. And tonight, David, the president also unveiling the strictest car emission limits in history. This means that by 2032, most new cars sold in America will likely be electric. But this is a politically loaded move. Donald Trump has claimed that electric vehicles will kill the American auto industry. <laughs> but the Biden administration says this is critical to combat climate change, and it puts America at the forefront of the electric vehicle industry. Yes, why be a leader when you could be a follower? <laughs> you know, really, why, why lead the world when you can, uh, you know, just uh, isolate yourself, opt out and be, uh, you know, all depressed in the dark. Why not just, uh, you know, become a maggot and just say, uh, this is uh, this is my grievance and I want somebody who's going to get even with the people that did this to me instead of saying, hey, let's lead the world. Let's be America. Let's be Americans in America. Let's do that. I mean, this was before I, 30,000 new jobs just announced there in Arizona, Ohio, New Mexico, and Oregon. 30,000 jobs right over here, right here. And the email that uh, Biden sent out this morning to people who owe money for student loans and then went into be, you know, public service like uh, their nurses, their firefighters, their police officers, their whatever. Uh, your loans are forgiven. Good morning. Have a great day. Love, Joe Biden. Versus Donald Trump's, uh, you know, thing on my phone this morning that said, get your filthy hands off a of Trump Tower. I swear to God, it was right there on my freaking phone. The guy is always asking me for money. I should buy gold sneakers. How'd that work out? I'm... Oh, I didn't even want to go there. But no, nobody's buying those uh, freaking gold sneakers. They're, they're as ugly as they are, you know, worthless. But honestly, you know, oh, it's the sneaker heads. It's the sneaker heads. Uh, you know, they want these things. Get the, just bite me, really. I, I did the lying and the cheating and the, the, the grifting and the, everything he does just dies. Everything he touches just dies, including Americans in COVID, a million of us, just dead, literally dead. People wonder, why don't you like him? <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, from the days of uh, not renting to black people in New York, in Queens, where I'm from, uh, all the way to the Central Park Five, where he called for the death penalty for guys who, in the end, turned out to be innocent, uh, to birtherism uh, because uh, we had our first African-American president, OK, who was the whitest black man besides for Brett that you ever met because he was raised by a, a, a white woman and grandma in freaking Kansas. Speaking of Brett, can I add a couple openly mocking a handicapped reporter or ah, I, I about, didn't even get there, talking yeah. about peeking on 14 year olds at his Miss America pageant? No, I was just talking about the racist part. Of yeah, I just felt like adding profile. a few reasons why we might be trashing Trump on a daily basis. That gentleman was very upset with us. What gentleman? That guy called in using very, very uh, spicy language. Was not happy. Tried to get him on. Would not stay. They won't. They can't. The facts are not with them, okay? And they know that, listen, they're going to get fact-checked in real time, and they just, they can't handle the truth. It is, uh, you know, back to that movie now. It really is. You know, you, you want this country to be a functioning, civilized society. You want this place to be, you know, uh, the, the, the shining city on the hill, okay? But you don't want to do what's necessary to be that. You don't want to do what's necessary to lead the world. You don't want to elect a president who's actually taking us there. You want your grievances of the past instead to be front and center. And, and quite frankly, uh, nobody's really into that kind of chaos anymore. We've already experienced it. Everybody likes to forget 2020. They're actually mocking you now, uh, the Republicans are, when they ask you this ridiculous question, are you better off now than you were four years ago? Well, four years ago, we were isolated in our own houses, apartments, kids couldn't go to school, churches were closed, synagogues were closed, people couldn't uh, freely associate, we had to social distance if we were out, 
okay? I mean, half the places we wanted to go were closed. Uh, what is wrong with people? I, honest to God, I, I mean, is America on so many drugs now that they, they literally, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they need a little blue pill to just even feel like a man anymore. And then on top of it, they have a short attention span theater to the point where they can't remember COVID. So let me just tell you this. I don't know why this happened today. Honestly, I don't. But the Republican Party is so interested in not getting round two of Donald Trump, just so you know. They don't want him either. They don't. Republican billionaires could very easily loan Donald Trump the money. In fact, in fact, if anybody thought Donald Trump was good for anything, they would buy themselves the uh, American president. Donald Trump is out there begging for money every single freaking day. He's all over my phone at asking me for money constantly. Uh, the other day when Letitia James was told she could stay on the case, he said the witch hunt continues. I need money. I need money. The guy has spent, I mean, the, the, the super PAC he has, has spent more money on legal fees than they have getting other Republicans elected. And the elected Republicans know this, okay? They're not stupid. So today, they actually let it slip out. Oops. Don't you hate when the truth actually slips out of the Republican Party that they would like to raise the age of Social Security and cut the Social Security benefit? Right. 170 House GOP lawmakers, including supposed allies of Donald Trump, literally endorsed a series of bills today that are designed to advance uh, the cutting of Social Security benefits and the raising of the age. So, so that, you know, uh, people who are, uh, I'm going to say like in their 50s now or early 60s, you, if, if you elected Donald Trump, you would probably have to work until you were 70 or 75. And that's when the beginner benefits would kick in. And then if you made it to 80, you would get the, the, uh, mo the, the Social Security that you really earned. Because right now, you know, if you take Social Security at 66 and six months, because it's already there at that point, uh, you get the, the minimal amount, right, that's uh, owed to you. If you can, you know, keep working your ass off until you're 70, let's say you don't work in a back-breaking industry, like uh, maybe you do this, what I do, right? And if you could just, you know, eke out a living until you're 70, then you'll get your full benefit. Well, they, they don't even want to see that happen until you're 80. Now, you would think that if they were supportive of Donald Trump's presidency, they would not be talking about cutting Social Security. They would not be talking about getting rid of Obamacare, which they're talking about today, too. They would not be talking about, uh, you know, uh, the problems of Medicare. You know, ever since I'm a broadcaster, what is it, 30 years? They have been predicting the demise of Medicare and Social Security. They're doing it again today, telling me it's going to run out of money in 2028. Well, here's a quick, easy fix for you. How about a donut hole? What? Yeah. All right. So we all pay in FICA tax. We all pay into 166 some odd dollars, $166,000, right? After that, if you make $169,000, you don't pay FICA tax anymore. Okay, let that rest, let that go. And then at 400, it kicks in again. All things Randy at randyrhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. So you can have 30,000 jobs created before breakfast and $6 billion worth of student loan forgiven uh, by 8.30 in the morning. Or, or you could have this. Should I allow Hunter to give his opening statement first? Well, uh, doesn't appear Mr. Biden showed up for his public hearing, so we'll recognize you, Mr. Bobulinski. You're presented uh -huh. here today with two narratives in this investigation, a false one being pushed by Joe Biden, a serial liar and fabulous, now under this impeachment investigation for public corruption, and his son, Hunter Biden, a chronic drug addict facing two indictments with 12 counts. Even if we were to believe every single word offered by these utterly compromised and biased witnesses, Mr. Bobulinski and Mr. Galanis, their allegations don't identify any wrongdoing, much less an impeachable offense by President Biden. Rep. Dan Goldman and Jamie Raskin, both lawyers, will continue to lie today in this hearing and then go straight to the media to tell more lies. Hunter Biden's defense attorney, Abby Lowell, weaponizes letters to Congress to try to smear my name. Mr. And Chairman. State 
I apologize for the disruption. Am I supposed to say it's my time, Mr. Raskin? Yeah, state your parliamentary oh, inquiry because we've got a very important hearing here and we don't have time for stunts. It's not a stunt. Me? It's um, I'm, I'm simply asking that Mr. Uh, Bubble. You don't have a parliamentary inquiry. Chair now recognizes Mr. Oh. Parnas. Once again, we're back to a hearing where no evidence is being provided of any sort of wrongdoing by the president. But I want to go that, back, that's Mr. A Mr. Actually, it's my time, sir. I want to remind people, he's sitting in prison. <laughs> that's why he can't be here today. He's sitting in prison for scamming workers' pensions. What oh, is God. the crime, sir? You, you, Specifically. You, just, wait, you keep, uh, you asked me to answer the question. I answered the question. No. Rico, you're obviously not familiar with corruption Excuse statute. me, sir. Excuse Para. me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Rico is not a crime. It is a category. And Joe Biden was a vice president of the United States. He doesn't register under FARA as a lobbyist. And you are sitting there at an impeachment inquiry uh, trying to impeach the current president of the United States, Joe Biden, under FARA? What is wrong with people? What, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't even know. But uh, this hearing yesterday, it's, it, it, it's still, it still amazes me how little it got covered yesterday. I mean, you had Love Parnas testifying that Rudy Giuliani was talking to the Russian intelligence operatives that were floating around Ukraine, uh, trying to feed him information to take back to the United States in order to interfere in the election yet again, the Russians, right? I, I, I mean, it, it left Parnas was like, and Bill Barr knew all about it. Bill Barr understood that Russian intelligence uh, was feeding uh, fake dirt to Rudy Giuliani. They were saying that they had, uh, you know, stuff that could compromise Joe Biden and nothing ever materialized, but they were sending Rudy Giuliani back to the United States over and over. And Bill Barr knew. Bill Barr freaking knew. And he's saying Bill Barr should be investigated now. I mean, this was amazing testimony. I didn't see one thing about it. Nothing. I, I, I was stunned by this. What type of dirt were you trying to get? Uh, we were searching for Hunter's uh, hard drive that we were told was out there. We were searching for bank records uh, to validate certain bank records that was given to me, Hunter's personal bank records uh, that was uh, given to me by John Solomon that he said he got um. from the FBI uh, to validate certain payments that were going uh, for car purchases. But the objective was to try to find a link from uh, any of the payments that would go into uh, Joe Biden's account. And who told you to get this dirt? Uh, well, who told me? Rudy Giuliani. Uh, anyone else that you remember? Uh, John Solomon. Uh, I mean, everybody that was part of the team. I mean, that, Did Bill Barr was, know that you were involved in getting this dirt? Absolutely. Bill, was, Bill Barr was notified of our investigation from the day he took office. Did you ever have a conversation with Bill Barr of being lenient towards Dimitri uh, in his role, in Bill Barr's role as attorney general? I personally did not, but I w was witness to uh, Victoria Tunzing and Jody Genova having a conversation with Bill Barr about Dimitri Firtish. Oh what did they God. say to Bill Barr? Uh, basically, they were telling him that the um, charges were false and that he needs to drop the charges and basically end the case. And why did they tell him to drop the charges on this Russian oligarch? Because Dimitri Firtish was going to help us um, getting dirt on the Bidens <gasps> or whatever else the Trump campaign needed. So my understanding is you have the Trump campaign telling you to talk to a Russian oligarch to get dirt on the president of the United States for political reasons, and then someone from the Trump campaign is talking to the attorney general to drop the charges because this foreign national is helping get dirt on a political candidate? Absolutely. Oh, good Lord. Oh, my God. And so, you know, when he talks about John Solomon, do you know who John Solomon is? He's a right-wing lunatic, fringy guy who wrote for The Hill. Uh, the Capitol Hill magazine, he wrote for The Hill uh, during the Trump administration. And people were literally quoting John Solomon's, uh, you know, bullcrap uh, by saying, but it's in The Hill. It's in The Hill. It must be true. It must be true. He was r rode out on a rail. OK, the guy is a right wing lunatic now. Uh, but it's amazing. This testimony. I, I, I was, I, I'm shocked. And, and last night, and like nobody covered it. They covered AOC saying, what's the crime? And uh, there was a very funny, uh, you know, part where, you know, uh, Jared Moskowitz, which was hysterical, actually, where Jared Moskowitz said to James Comer, hey, why don't you uh, just take the vote now and let's impeach Joe Biden? You can go ahead. I I'll second you. Introduce the vote. 
to impeach Joe Biden, and I'll second it so we could put it on the floor and we could take the vote. Silence. Because I got nothing. They don't even have a crime. They don't even have the name of a crime, right? But there are so many people in this sworn testimony. Now, Lev Parnas, as you know, went to jail. I think he served four months uh, for uh, tax fraud, okay? And uh, it was him and Igor Fruman who were in about 1,000 photos with Donald Trump and 1,000 photos with Rudy Giuliani, okay? And they're Ukrainian nationals testifying that Bill Barr knew everything that was going on. Do you believe that Bill Barr should be investigated for uh, his conduct in potentially dropping these charges? I absolutely believe that. But not only that, I believe Bill Barr should be investigated into the cover-up and trying to silence me to get the truth out of what really happened in Ukraine. And explain the cover-up and what you believe he should be investigated with your last minute. Uh, I was, my arrest was set up strictly to shut me up, to seal my documents, take away all my information, and turn me into a crazy man that had no way to prove what was going on. Uh, but the real story was Bill Barr was trying to save Donald Trump from impeachment and use me as a scapegoat. What he didn't realize was Donald Trump was not going to stop and was continue doing what he wanted to do. And that's why it blew up in Bill Barr's face. Mm. He also hired a special uh, pro- counsel at the time, Brady, to look into Ukraine. When we tried to reach out with my attorney to uh, Special Counsel Brady, he never returned our phone call. Nobody wanted to hear anything I had to say that had to do with Ukraine, Donald Trump, or Rudy Giuliani. And we all lived through it. We all know what happened. We all know Rudy Giuliani was dirty as, uh, you know, uh, the, the bottom of a, a shoe in, in Manhattan. I mean, there's... there's, And nobody's covering this story. Like, nobody even wants to go down that road. Nobody even wants to, you know... Figure out that the Justice Department was weaponized during the Trump administration against people who were trying to tell the truth about getting dirt on Joe Biden in Ukraine, which he was impeached for. Call in, connect. Speak to Randy. Call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Match day. It is the Free Speech TV Spring Pledge Drive, and today is match day. So whatever you can donate today, please do it. Know that it will be matched dollar for dollar by a frontline funder who cares a great deal about your access to independent media, so much so that they put up that money and match whatever you can do today uh, for the benefit of freespeech.org. Free Speech is a not-for-profit. It's been around for 25 years. It provides all kinds of viewpoints and, and, and exchanges between uh, experts and callers and people from all across the United States of America. Uh, and it's uh, a, a wonderful uh, place for you to uh, support. It, it just, it's, it, the work that it does is work that you don't see anywhere else. That's why you don't see anything about this particular hearing except the fun little snippet. I mean, I played you a mashup, okay, uh, that the uh, networks made. And it did not include Lev Parnas saying that Rudy Giuliani was getting his information from Russian intelligence operatives and not even building the story off of last week's story where the, the supposed FBI undercover guy also turned out to be Russian intelligence. I mean, you can't make this crap up. It actually happens. Now, in America, like with regularity, because we invited this trash in. That's what we did. Anyway, donate today, will you please? 877-378-8669. Uh, free Speech TV is freespeech.org. Or text to 44321. 44321, the letters FSTV, and we will send you a secure link. You can do it uh, a one time. Uh, it'll be matched dollar for dollar today. You could do a recurring uh, and if you wanted to turn off the recurring, uh, you could do it at any time. If you, you know, your situation changes or you want to change the amount, you want to up the amount, you want to add $5, whatever, uh, use the uh, free speech TV text, right? Uh, 44321 and put in FSTV. Thank you so much for supporting uh, this work. Joseph in Houston. Um, hey, Randy, I'm already, I'm already rec- recruiting pay, pay, uh, payee. 
Uh, but uh, because I love you so much, I might just might go ahead and um, take you up on that offer, kid. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, you spoke to a guy out from Dayton. I think his name was Robert. He didn't want you to call him no names. <laughs> but um, when you, <laughs> Randy, listen. This, this this scam of a of a trial that they got going on that that stuff is costing not only me me and you money, but it's also costing a guy a simpleton guy that, like, that, like Robert of uh, money as well. Am I right? I don't know what you said. I mean, we're paying for these scams scam uh, trials uh, uh, uh trials that they they having right. What, what trial? These the, 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 the thing they had yesterday with the with the with oh the, hearings uh, the the house hearings yes yes well it's not that we're paying for them we 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 pay the congressmen's salaries right and so this is what they do instead of solve problems that's why I said you could have more of that or you could have Biden who before breakfast this morning gave uh, you know uh, seventy eight thousand people the good news that their student loan debt was forgiven got the endorsement of the steel workers union and then uh, actually moved on to uh, announcing that you know billions of dollars are going to be spent in Arizona Ohio and uh, you know uh, uh, various places making uh, computer chips. Right, right, right. So which do you and want? That's just, that's just really the only question. It doesn't. You don't have to drill down so deep, uh, like like our other caller was like. Do you think that uh, Donald Trump was, uh, you know, um, channeling the movie um, Planet of the Apes when he insulted uh, Letitia James? Well, of course I do, because he's a racist. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of speaking of movies, speaking of movies, Randy, listen, Scorsese, um, Ross Sterling, Spielberg. Uh, okay. the Palmer. All right. You, 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 you mentioned earlier this week that you uh, you think that there's going to be a, a a movie made. Um, there, there, and that uh, there already and is that, one. Uh, you mentioned uh, Robert Robert De Niro that, 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 that there's no redeeming qualities about this fella. But I, I was thinking to myself, Randy, if there's only one way this this guy can if it's gonna be a, a redeeming quality about the, about these fellas is, is if they um this this is my my, my scenario of, of a movie that uh, Trump and uh, Giuliani they sit from sit, sit from a, a dinner table from one another and they, after 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 uh, uh, Trump lose by ten million ten million votes is, uh, after you find out they lost by ten million votes. That's when uh, Rudy and Julia are gonna 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 pow pow on, on on each other. All right, and that and that can be a redeeming that can be a redeeming uh, thing that that I think it can, it can be redeemed somewhat. Okay, I thank got... you, thank you, John. All right, not a clue. Uh, Deborah in Colorado. Hi, Randy. Hello. Um. Hi. Um. I uh, do not think that Trump. Um, understands the definition of entitlement. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've been paying into Medicare and Social Security now for 55 years. And why is that any different than paying into a pension plan or a retirement plan? Right, it's what not. Does, what, does he think, what does he think that that's government giving us money? <laughs> I, you know, the idea that we let them get away with uh, calling uh, insurance programs that we are entitled to because we pay for them uh, entitlements, uh, we're entitled to them. That's why they get away with calling them entitlements. But the true meaning is insurance plan. These are insurance plans. And every time you get paid, you pay the premium. So if you get paid biweekly, you're paying a premium twice a month, not just once a month, like a car insurance premium, but twice uh -huh. a month. I mean, the idea that they, that they keep on you know, playing with this thing, it's because they're in charge of it, uh, that the, and they can, so they do. But it's ridiculous. It's it's a ridiculous name for an insurance plan. I I agree. And can I say one more thing? I guess. <laughs> Thank you, President Biden, for forgiving my student loan. Oh, were you one because, of them today? Well, no. It was it was a while ago because I'm 71 years old and all I have is Social Security to live on, and I there's no possible way that by the end of my life, I could pay back the student loan. So what happened? 
Um, I never had a um, high enough paying job. To, no, um, no, no. I don't. Per- I, I, I'm not. Oh, I'm saying what happened when? Uh, who, how did you get your your loan forgiven? Oh, oh, I got I got a notice uh, by mail about six months ago. Oh, you did. Yes. And, and how much did you owe it uh, all these years later? $30,000. Oh, my God. And what did you go to school for? <laughs> for for business. And, and when, once I got my um, once I got my degree, I made less than what I did before I got my degree. <laughs> and I would have never been able to catch up gotcha, my entire gotcha. life. Well, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. That story, of is, course. That story is more important than anything you said. <laughs> this is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. At what point did Mr. Giuliani begin working directly with Russian agents and Russian assets? individuals who would later become sanctioned by Donald Trump's own Treasury Department for spreading propaganda and disinformation against Joe Biden? Uh, It was sometime in uh, probably around May, June of 2019. Were you aware, was Mr. Giuliani aware that these people were basically just doing the bidding of Vladimir Putin? Absolutely. Oh, my God. So he had no hesitation about spreading lies that were concocted by Russian agents? As long as it fit the narrative, absolutely not. How were you and Giuliani able to take these false allegations peddled by corrupt officials and Russian agents and promote and amplify them here in the United States in our political system? Weren't media groups skeptical of your claims? Um, Most media groups, uh, I'd probably say all except for Fox and a few other uh, right-wing media groups, uh, didn't want to take any of the information and that ag- uh, aggravated uh, Rudy Giuliani and John Solomon and other players. And the main group that was being pushed through was Fox, uh, jo- Sean Hannity, and some other media personnel over there. Oh, God. But then there was also other people that were doing the bidding for the Russian uh, people in Congress, like Senator Ron Johnson, like Congressman Pete Sessions that sits here right now. Oh, my God. With me from the very beginning on this journey into finding up the digging dirt on Joe Biden. Oh, my God. Oh my, it's like the scene in, in Goodfellas where, you know, he says, uh, and is, um, is Mr. Uh, Paul sitting right here? Yeah, that's him right there. I mean, it's unbelievable. He's, he's, he's literally naming current members of the Senate and current members who are sitting in front of him, in front of him, on the House Oversight Committee as being people who knew that Russian intelligence was feeding information to Rudy Giuliani they were disseminating it because it fit a narrative Donald Trump wanted told. And Fox News, guys like Sean Hannity and obviously Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, they were spreading what everybody knew was Russian dis and misinformation about Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. I mean, you... It's it's unbelievable to me. You, so so so, so <laughs> you know what this uh, failed impeachment inquiry has actually produced, don't you? This failed impeachment inquiry produced what should be the third Trump impeachment. It produced evidence that Donald Trump was colluding with Russian intelligence during the 1920 presidential campaign that he lost. Not just 1516, where Mueller had to indict the whole troll farm. And, you know, now Prigozhin, the guy who was running that St. Petersburg troll farm that was, uh, you know, seeding uh, Facebook uh, feeds and, and people's news feeds on Facebook uh, based on the polling information they got from Paul Manafort in payment to Oleg Deripaska, another Russian oligarch who Manafort owed millions of dollars to. You can see what happens when somebody is desperate for money, can't you? Uh huh. So when that all happened in 2015 16, Bill Barr ran interference and said, okay, nothing to see here. Move along, move along. Then it happened again in 1920, and Bill Barr played that game again. 
The only thing Bill Barr didn't count on was that Donald Trump was going to insist that he swear as the attorney general of the United States of America that the election was stolen. And Bill Barr wouldn't do that. It was that was apparently his, uh, you know, cutoff point. That's where he said, "Okay, I'm out. I'm out. You need a wartime consigliere. You're out, Tom. You know what I'm saying? Uh, But everything else was doable. Everything else. And, you know, it's so interesting because a couple of days ago on Joy Reid's show. And this is this is why it's so hard for me to to understand or forgive the lack of reporting on what was testified to yesterday, even if it's stuff that needs to be debunked. Let's say, let's say Parnas uh, committed perjury yesterday all day. I don't know. Let's just say he did. Then it needs to be debunked, doesn't it? But that they just let it lie, that testimony, they just let it sit there. See, this is when people call me up and they go, how come the Democrats don't play the way the Republicans do? This, we don't need to. When the story is handed to us, the truth of it is handed to us on a silver plate, then they, they just walk away and they ignore it. And, and I can't explain it because, like I said, Joy Reid uh, was talking to Will Bunch the other day about Oleg Deripaska and about Russian intelligence agents feeding uh, information to the FBI and posing as FBI uh, officers. And they were really nothing but Russian intelligence, and now they're in jail. I mean, so it's known that that happened. Talk to me about what we should be focusing on when it comes to Oleg Deripaska, this Russian oligarch, who that seems to have ties to everything from Mitch McConnell to Trump, and this apparent, I guess we'd call him a spy? Yeah, I mean, uh, Deripaska is kind of the zealot of this whole Trump-Russia scandal. He appears in the background everywhere, sometimes in the foreground. But um, I think really critical is this long-standing relationship that Deripaska had with Paul Manafort. He mysteriously became Trump's campaign manager and it's gonna in 2016. Be again. And we now know that Manafort was sharing important data from the Trump campaign, uh, polling data and data that could have helped Russia's internet trolls um, know what states to target with their with their internet trolling. Uh, you know, he shared that with a suspected Russian intelligence agent who was also part of this triangle with Manafort and Durapaska. And then how how does this FBI agent who is supposed to be investigating Durapaska then end up working for him a year or two later, <laughs> if if that's indeed when it started? Um, yeah. You know, um, uh, I'd, I'd love to see the Times, given its role in disseminating the bad information, go back. I mean, I think they should apologize for their bad coverage, but I think they should also investigate yeah. how they were duped by these FBI agents and by their intelligence sources and, and share that with their readers and share that with the public. Because clearly there's a lot about this we don't know. And like you said, Trump's running for president again. McConnell's trying to be Senate majority leader again. No. Uh, you know, a lot of this ties into Ukraine, which is about the most important thing going in the world right now. And I think I think the public deserves answers that we don't have right now. And let me show you the ultimate proof that this story is real, okay? And that this story implicates Fox News hosts, John Solomon, the writer at The Hill, uh, right-wing lunatic fringy people, Rudy Giuliani, who was, uh, you know, feeding the Fox News viewers, the Newsmax viewers, uh, you know, all of this, uh, you know, Russian intelligence disinformation and misinformation about Hunter Biden's laptop and about uh, uh, Joe Biden and about Burisma and about Victor Shokin, who was fired because he was not investigating Burisma not investigating Burisma. I mean, the gaslighting, the turning, everything that that we know that it's demonstrably true on its head. Let me show you the ultimate piece of proof that um, this story implicates all the wrong people like Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, John Solomon, Rudy Giuliani, and Donald Trump. Okay, Here, here's your proof. Is impeachment the next step? Are you going to hold a vote on the House floor? I know it's up to Mike Johnson, but the margins, Congressman, you lost Kevin McCarthy. Ken Buck left last week. George Santos was ousted. Unless you get Democratic votes, this is going to be real tough. So it it kind of seems like you're chasing your tail at this point because this is not going to go anywhere. That was Newsmax. This is Fox. End of this week, Congress is due to go into recess for another two weeks. And I I do think that in some ways it just feels like they keep doing the same hearing over and over again. And people are starting to wonder, at some point, do you fish or cut bait? 
and mm -hmm. do something about a vote or not and move on to the general election. This is witness testimony. So a lot of this evidence is situational. It's circumstantial. What does the oversight committee need right now to complete its investigation, to fill in these holes? But where is the evidence of wrongdoing on the president's part? And how long can you continue this investigation without that evidence. I think, John, though, why we're still here, because I do think that people are maybe becoming a little bit tired of all of this. That's how you know. Newsmax and Fox and all the right-wing media pundits, they're like, it's just, we're, we're, we don't want to hear anymore. You keep having the same hearing over and over again, except yesterday you had a witness who was with Rudy Giuliani at all these inflection points at all these 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 totally uh, demonstrably true points of Rudy being in Ukraine, of Rudy talking to uh, 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 Dmitry Firtash, of, of Rudy and, and Paul Manafort doing favors for Oleg Deripaska and promoting Russian intelligence office. You remember Maria Bar uh, Maria Butina? Remember her? So she was a Russian intelligence operative who weaseled her way into the NRA. Remember how embarrassing that was? That was the tip of the iceberg, okay? Now the rest of the story about Russian intelligence and who they were talking to, Rudy Giuliani, and who they were uh, you know, relying on to disseminate, Ron Johnson, Devin Nunes, um, Pete Sessions, Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, it's, it's, it's all out there now. And all of a sudden Fox says, okay, we're out. We've, we've had enough. We've had enough.